fusion fuel in the form of a plasma has a lot of interesting properties that allow us to use it, study it, and hold it inside fusion reactors. Let's take a look at how we catch lightning in a bottle. If we tried to confine our fusion fuel in a cylinder made from any solid material, two things would happen. First, the high temperature fuel will come into contact with the wall of the container and transfer some of its heat energy to the wall. Second, the hot fuel would cool down to below fusion temperatures so that the fusion reactions stop occurring. In order to make fusion work at all, we have to make sure that the fuel stays hot. And this means that the fuel can't be allowed to touch anything. How can you hold something without touching it? In the case of plasma, with a magnetic field. We're going to use this machine to show how magnetic fields can be used to influence a plasma. I've made a weak plasma in here by just applying a high voltage across a gas that I've pumped out. And now that I'm applying this horseshoe magnet, you can see that it can move the plasma around pretty strongly. But a horseshoe magnet can't be turned on and off, and they're very big and heavy. So instead, we like to use electromagnets to control our plasmas. And now, if you'll watch, the electromagnet squeezes the plasma away from the walls of the tube so it's hotter and brighter than it is when the electromagnet's off. So we use electromagnets like this in order to do our fusion research. Any charged particle, like the protons, electrons, and nuclei that we've been talking about, which is moving across a magnetic field, will experience a force. This force will be perpendicular to the magnetic field and the direction of motion of the particle. This effect is used in lots of practical ways, such as to steer the electron beam that paints the picture in a television tube. In fusion research, we use magnetic fields to confine the electrons and ions of the fusion plasma. Here's how it works. If we create a magnetic field inside of a cylinder, the ions that were going to hit the wall are deflected into a circular path around the magnetic field and away from the walls of the cylinder. Increasing the strength of the magnetic field decreases the radius of the circular path the ions follow and holds them more tightly in the magnetic field. This seems like a good way to confine our fusion plasma, except that the plasma can escape from the ends of the cylinder. The easiest way to close off the ends of a cylinder is to bend it around and put the ends together, creating the shape of a torus. That's not a car, by the way. It's a shape like a donut. Charged particles, either protons or electrons, that are traveling toward the walls of the torus are deflected away, while particles traveling around the torus are gently guided by the field around and around. This way, the hot plasma particles are kept from touching the walls, and their temperatures are kept high enough that fusion reactions begin to occur. The magnetic field forms a magnetic bottle that confines the plasma inside the torus. In fusion research, the container we keep the plasma in is called a vacuum vessel, because it contains a vacuum, like a light bulb, where the plasma is created. The powerful magnetic field is created by coils that surround the vacuum vessel. This type of fusion confinement device is called a tokamak, a word coined by Russian researchers who did a lot of early work on fusion. What you see here is the D3D tokamak, which is located in San Diego, California. It may not look like a donut because of all the extra equipment used in fusion research, but buried in the middle of all this is a torus containing a fusion plasma. So how are we doing in our attempts to perfect fusion power? This graph shows how much power has been produced in various experiments around the world. The basic message is that each year has brought improved performance from these machines. Most recently, the TFTR tokamak at Princeton University in New Jersey produced 10 megawatts of power. If this power was completely converted into electricity, it would be enough to briefly light 
one hundred thousand household light bulbs. We know how to confine the plasma and we know how to heat it to fusion temperatures. Now we're designing a large experimental tokamak which when operating should produce as much power as a standard power generating station, about 1,000 megawatts. If this power was completely converted into electricity, it would be enough to briefly run 100,000 homes. The name of this next experimental machine will be the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER for short. The development of fusion power from scratch has been a massive technological challenge. Comparable to the production of the 747 jumbo jet, finding a cure for cancer, or landing a man on the moon. An entirely new science had to be developed, along with the technology and the theoretical understanding of plasma physics. This work had to be done with no model or prior picture of what a fusion reactor should even look like. For the scientists and engineers that have devoted their lives to fusion research, the challenge and progress have been rewarding. We're getting close to fulfilling the promise of safe, non-polluting, abundant energy in our lifetimes. So as you can see, the future looks brighter than ever.